What's going on guys? Um, today I'm going to be installing this engine three inch exhaust that's right there, not, not in there, uh, on a 2014 Nissan Juke Nismo RS. And uh, you might ask yourself, Conrad, normally you read a bunch of forums and stuff before you do this install. Have you done that for this? And the answer would be no. I have not done any sort of reading and I'm not even sure that I have all the parts because I got a bunch of used parts. Clearly I have all three pieces of the exhaust and some bolts and then I had to get some different gaskets. You'll notice these are two bolt flanges and this is a four bolt flange, but the two bolts do line up with the proper places. So I'll probably just lop off the ends of those. So uh, we're gonna get this girl out and get the bigger girl in here and then we'll get to work. We'll get into the car and see what we're working with. Alright, so this is what we're working with. Obviously, there are all three pieces of the three inch exhaust. I got some gaskets from Jags, um, and this was as good as they were able to do. Uh, they at least seem to be the right material, just I'm gonna have to lop off the ends, or maybe I'll just leave them and they'll break off. And then it looks like I have the correct number of bolts. Uh, I might not have the right nuts. I guess we'll find out when we go under there. Um, as far as lifting up the car, um, I don't actually have four jack stands. I only have two, one, twos over there. So my plan is to uh, do what I do on the 370 all the time, which is jack stand, jack stand, ramp, ramp. So I'm gonna use this little guy, which is amazing, especially if you have a lowered car, and I'm gonna find the jack points, which by the way, I don't know where they are. I guess, uh, I guess I'll go figure that out. But a uh, little puck, and then slide the ramp underneath, and I have the back right wheel chalked, and uh, Basically, that'll be the plan. Actually, I'll chalk both wheels since I have the other chalk laying around right here. But yeah, uh, lift up the front, put it on the ramps, make sure it doesn't roll backwards. And uh, I have the handbrake on and the car's in gear. So actually now that's convenient because that's locking the fronts and the rears. So yay us. But uh, yeah, that's the plan. Let's take a look. So this is my plan. Uh, so actually you can see the pinch welds are... Uh, up a little bit further maybe it's hard to see they're up up there on the other side of the jack but i'm using the hockey puck or the flying miata whatever the piece of rubber i'm using that to lift here it's a little bit further back so that's what i'm doing so i can make my method work but please feel free to do whatever you feel the most comfortable with for anyone who doesn't know these uh sorry, let me get the camera under here these pinch welds, oh shoot, super difficult for me to see. Let me see if I can feel them right here. These pinch welds right here are where you're supposed to put the jack, but uh, I'm putting them over here a little bit and I'm protecting my frame rail or this jack point by using this piece of rubber so that the weight is dispersed along the whole spot. So it should be okay. But the reason I'm doing that is so I have enough room to slide the ramp under. And hopefully, if I'm jacking in a good spot, I should be able to get this jack stand on that jack point as well. And then I'll move over to the other side. And with that, she's up in the air. Yeah, yes. Not too bad, other than this garage is super thin, which means you have to pump the jack a billion times. All right, let's get under there and see what we're working with. Welcome to the bottom of the Nismo RS Juke. Um, so that's towards the engine. That's towards the rear of the car. Um, so actually, I was thinking that I was gonna have to undo that guy, which actually would have been a huge pain, I think. I can't tell if that's directly touching the turbo, but I kind of think it is. Um, so anyway, my understanding is that this is then the downpipe, and this is like the primary cat. Just interesting because there's an O2 sensor right there. 
and then nothing after. So it looks like what we have to do is undo this guy here, which mates to this guy, which is, I guess, pretty obvious because it's got the hangers. I got the hangers, although I got to flip it over, I think. But anyway, um, then we got this little curvy pipe to make that little curvy pipe. And then we got the muffler back there, even though it's a straight through muffler to the actual muffler. So it looks like all of the exhaust bolts are 14 millimeter. So like these guys are 14s, although they make an awful freaking sound when you turn them because uh, of the spring. Um, uh, now I'm gonna have some difficulty getting it on. But anyway, um, if I can't get it in the next four seconds, I'll just give up. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it's a good sound. But anyway, um, so it looks like it's just some 14s and then these guys are all 12 mils. So I'm guessing we're gonna have to take these brackets out to fit the pipe in. It might not be impossible to do without it. I won't have to take that one off though because I'm not changing this pipe today or ever maybe. Um, so yeah, it seems pretty simple. I guess I'll update you if I have any problems, but seems pretty straightforward. All right, so for the rear muffler, you get to swap over the rubber hangers. And uh, so I used to have the biggest pain with hangers before I met WD-40. And so basically, you just get that guy nice and covered and just pull the hanger back so that it actually gets right on the part you to slip off. And then, probably not gonna be able to do this with two hands now that I get the camera out of one hand, but. Of course, if you need to get uh, a big old flathead or a pry bar or something, you can pry it off. But once I get this WD-40 on, usually it's a lot easier. I just get this motion going. So anyway, try that if you ever have difficulty with these. If you do a lot of exhaust installs, and this is probably super obvious, but it wasn't for me when I started learning. So anyway, go ahead and give it a try. All right. So... I found the first interesting thing about this exhaust. Um, so when they made it, it looks like they split up this exhaust piece into two. So you can see this guy actually has two hangers on one side and the other hanger that used to suspend the other, the muffler is on the other pipe. So actually all three of these pipes almost need to be connected for them to suspend each other. It seems like actually you could use another hanger over where those two guys meet. So actually I have none of the bolts in right now, but all of the hangers in. So I think what I'm gonna do is swing these two guys up, mate them first, then go mate those, then do the springy boys last, cause the springy boys seem to be the most difficult ones to put in, but I guess I'll, I'll report back. But anyway, it looks like I'm gonna have to slide the gasket on, swing it up, slot the bolts through and new nuts and send it. So there you go. So I'm gonna film this because uh, I was struggling and I figured out, ooh, wrong with the exhaust. And I figured out uh, something. So the engine exhaust that I had, I don't know if you saw when I laid it out, the box had these bolts in it. And I thought these were engine's bolts as replacements for the bolts that come in there. But uh, you can see that the way this guy works is it's got a spring and the spring seats on the bolt and at the top of the flange. But you can see that this, little flange right here this guy he actually passes through the flange of the exhaust and it seats right there so it would seat fully like that if it chose to right and that's where the spring goes the spring actually pressures up against this and provides i i'm not really sure maybe dampening of vibration in the exhaust um for the stock exhaust so i just spent forever trying to get this guy to fit with the engine exhaust and it didn't. And that's because this is not an engine bolt. So my assessment after looking at pictures online is that engine just ships you some, some bolts that thread into the <coughs> um, permanent nuts. They're like welded to the uh, downpipe and you just are supposed to thread into those. So that's what I'm gonna do. I just pulled these out of a box. These were from the 370s exhaust or one of my exhaust uh, projects for that. So I'm gonna see if they work. Um, so yeah, just goes to show you should never trust exactly what comes in the box because, or what comes from your 
you know, purchase because you may not know what it is. Anyway, I'm going to see if these guys thread in. If not, I'm going to have to go to the hardware store and buy some bolts that have the right thread pitch. So I had to run to the hardware store to get some replacements. Uh, the bolt is an M10. I picked by 40 millimeters long with a pitch of 1.25. So if you ever have to replace these, that's what you need. And I just dropped my socket. Anyway, back to the install. And with that, all of them are at least bolted on. Um, you can see this guy. Actually, these are super long. So these are 40 millimeters long, and I probably could have done significantly less than that. I guess I didn't measure it, but maybe 20 millimeters would have been fine. 30 definitely would have been fine. I'm going to be cranking on these guys for a long time. But everything else is all tightened up. And what I'm seeing is something that I saw online is that this is something for the RS. And, I mean, it could make some big-ass spacer things, but... My guess is that you cannot run this with this exhaust just at all. So that kind of stinks, but I guess uh, if I really care, I'll go buy an aftermarket. Whatever this would be called, chassis support? Not sure. Anyway, uh, I guess uh, I'll bolt everything up and then get a sound clip. Last little tidbit that I learned is, uh, I don't know if you can see the rear subframe in there, but the black metal piece that connects each wheel right there in the center. I actually just used that to lower the rear all at once. It was super easy. So in the future, I'll just drive up on the ramps and then do the rear this way. It's nice to have a car that's not incredibly low, so you can reach things underneath it. It's great. Anyway, there she is. I guess we'll go take a drive and see how she sounds. This is a full pull in sport mode, because that matters. 